still won't. Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to today's show. And um, Jesus is Lord, as we always say. We encourage you to seek the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help us, God. Please go to our website, which is crossingpass.org. Check out all the shows that we're doing on television. We're also in the process of uploading all of these, um, the Zoom Bible studies that we're doing. All of our live recordings are going to be on there. Uh, we just finished off our archives where Don Reed is on there with all his old shows, plus what he's doing now, uh, the new things that that he's starting to do. So we want to continue to to edify and uplift one another and build the kingdom of God. So this is our this is our heartbeat. So I really thank you guys for supporting us in whatever manner you see fit. Today, we're going to be talking about the end of the book of Revelation, and then Dawn is going to bring us into the book of Genesis. So does anybody feel led to start us off in prayer today? Well, if you don't, I will. All right, Mr. Reed, go on, buddy. Lord, right now, <clears throat> my voice is not strong, but you are, and we are here on a group of trying to start something every year and continue on different subjects, different ideas, and this idea about studying the Bible through in one year. Some people can't even pick up the Bible, don't even know what the Bible is, have no desire. We pray that somebody will get touched by this program that Ron and I started years ago, and we ask God in Jesus' name that open up the spirit today. Let everybody be sensitive to spirit for his time and so forth and interrupting each other that we all gather for one one reason, that we glorify Jesus Christ. Amen. No other way. No person. And we have to honor each other, too. And we ask this in Jesus' name. And all good people said amen. Amen. All right, I'll well, pass well, it to the collection now. Yeah, amen. Well, hey, Lou, we're going to start off today and let you begin us out on the book of Revelation. So I'm just going to turn it right over to you. Okay. Well, first of all, tell everybody that I didn't know that I was sharing until a few minutes ago. <laughs> and, ready and didn't in know what season I was... and out of season, you're ready. You're in ready. season and out of season. So, we know you got something, Lou. So uh, this is completely spontaneous, but uh, not without much study. And uh, I've been studying this book for many decades. <laughs> and um, But it won't be polished, okay, is my only point. Now... The first of all, the, the mistake I see made most often about the book is that I hear preachers call it the book of revelations. Make it plural. It's not plural. It is the revelation. Not only singular, but the word the. It is the one and only revelation. The one and only revelation can only be one thing, and that's the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. It starts in... The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. And it ends in Revelation 22. There's one thing the whole book of the Bible is about, and that is revealing the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. It's on every page. If you look carefully, it's on every page. And so this is simply reviewing the most important points of the Bible, and that is, when they when Jesus is being revealed. Amen. Because that's what the whole book is about. Now, um, it's people think it's about the future. No. It says a number of times, it says grace and peace to you from him. He's breaking who up is, over here. And who was and who is to come. So it's about the past, present, and future revelations of jesus the revelation of jesus happened in the past it's happening now and it'll be happening in the future until he returns so when does it start it starts in genesis 1 1 when god created the heavens and the earth because it says in psalm 19 that the heavens declare his glory <laughs> the heavens reveal and it talks about in psalm 19 it talks about the sun is like the bride bridegroom it's saying the sun is a shadow of Christ. Right. It, it, everything revolves around it. 
It's the only source of light. So it's it's Christ-like in in the natural. So that's what this book is about. It's about <laughs> Lord Jesus being revealed, which happens in the whole book. Amen. So <clears throat> now let's go to uh, if we go to the seven churches. There's something important there, and that is in Colossians. God says. Okay. Cool. If you're if you're standing, if you have the Holy Spirit and you're forgiven, if you're, you're standing in the Holy of Holies with nothing left against you, nothing left that he would even scold you for. Well, if you read about the seven churches, he scolds five of them. Mm -hmm. So they're they're not his. They claim to be Christians, but they're not. Now they're in those churches, he says, yet there's a few among you. So there are some Christians, take the Catholic Church. You know, I know some very pious uh, Christians that love Jesus very much. They're in the Catholic Church. They're deceived about some things. And and he says that he has some people in among them, but five of the churches are lost. Mm. There's only two of them that are his churches, and that's the one that thinks they're weak and the other one that thinks they're poor. Of course, the weak church is really strong, and the poor church is really rich, because they have Christ. If you have Christ, you have everything there is to possess. Mm. You lack mm. nothing. Mm. You have everything if you have Jesus. If you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. Amen. Because it's all going to pass away in a very short period of time, and you will have nothing. Yeah. Amen. This is everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now, if we go to chapter 4, God includes that for a reason. He's trying to show us that, well, let me preface with this. If the Lord Jesus would appear before you right now, what would you do? Mm -hmm. You'd fall on your face, right. mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. Daniel did. We'd all fall on our face. We could do nothing but praise him. Mm -hmm. We couldn't stop praising him. Mm-hmm. That's what it's, God has shown us up in heaven. They cannot stop praising him. 20, there's no time in heaven, but if there was, you could say 24 hours a day, they praise the Lord Jesus. They can't stop. Hmm. That's a very key point, and he includes that for a reason, because it's going to explain something to us later. So keep that in mind. They can't stop praising God. Amen. Then... Then we go to chapter five. It talks about no one who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll, but no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth can open the scroll or even look inside it. Think of that. No one. But then it says one is found, and that's the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. Of course, that's for Jesus. He is worthy. To open the scroll. Why? Because he was slain to save mankind. That makes him worthy. That's God is worthy to judge us because he died for us. He proved he loved us by dying for us. So then we go to chapter six, and it says, I watched as the land opened the first of the seven seals. It talks about these four horses. <laughs> and and one of the big Heirs of the of many churches, as they say, the rider on the white horse is the Antichrist. Okay. <laughs> and it's it's just it's it's almost insanity if you think about it. First of all, the Antichrist is a man, and he's the man of sin. So no flesh can enter heaven. That tells us several times in the Bible, no flesh can enter heaven. So how did he get up there? And no and no sin can enter heaven. So he's a man of sin and flesh and he can't get in heaven. Yeah. You know, no one's going to break in heaven. You're not going to break into it. God lets you in or you don't get in. It's not the Antichrist on the white horse. There's only one that can open, can bring forth these seals, and that's the Lord Jesus. Amen. It's the Lord Jesus on the white horse, and he's given a crown. That Amen. should tell us who it is if he's given a crown. 
So th this is a very important point. The, net, the other thing is to realize that well, we'll come to the seven trumpets. The seven trumpets, oh, I'm sorry, the seven seals. The seven seals are about have already happened. They already took place. The, the uh, first seal took place in the Garden of Eden, you know, right after they got thrown out of the garden anyhow. Uh, when, when Jesus come in and he spoke war, famine, and plague to each of the three, that's the three horse. That's the three, the three horses that ride out of, of Revelation. Now, um, so we have the seven seals, and the last seal. Let me find this and read it to you. When we opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. Now, let me ask you something. Stop and think. If they can't stop praising God, they can't stop. How is there silence in heaven for half an hour? Think of it. Have you ever been any place where you can hear a pin drop for 30 minutes? It's very rare if it happens for 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. For half an hour, there's silence in heaven. There's only one thing can bring that about. Mm. They're looking down upon their Lord on the cross. Mm. Mm. There's no other possibility. That's the Lord on the cross. That's the seventh seal. <laughs> okay? Now, if we go, another important point is this, is to realize that God tells the same story over several times. Okay? We get, we get the, uh, if we go to the trumpets after the seven seals, you got the seven trumpets. And the seventh trumpet. Hey, Lou, you've got about two minutes, Lou. Okay. The seventh trumpet in uh, chapter 11, it says this. Listen very carefully. The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of the Lord and the Christ. There's only one, one time that's going to happen. That's when the Lord returns. Mm -hmm. So this is telling a short, it's not going to tell it about it in detail. It just says the seventh trumpet, the Lord returns. And if we go back to the New Testament, Paul says, he's talking about the return of the Lord. He says, at the last trump, he returns. Well, when is the last trump? In Revelation, the seventh trumpet. Mm -hmm. The Lord returns from the seventh trumpet. And then we go to verse, we go to chapter 12, and it starts the same story, tells about it in a different way. The perspective changes. If the first story is told, John's up in heaven looking down the earth. Now John's on the earth looking up in heaven. And it tells the same story over again in a little different point of view. If you understand this about the book, read the book with that in mind, and you'll find out you'll understand much more about it. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Amen. Amen. So let me say this. One of the major revelations that are coming out now, when the angel talked to Daniel, he told him that seal the book up because he wouldn't reveal it unto Daniel. He said, but these things are revealed until that final last generation. And he said that wisdom would increase. Wisdom would increase. Knowledge would increase. And this is exactly what we're seeing happening now. So we're finding out that I was taught, you know, 40 years ago that the seals, trumpets, and bowls or the vials all happen chronologically. And it, it, it's, <clears throat> in a sense, there's no way that can happen. There's no way they happen chronologically. And what I mean by that is there is no way all the seals could be opened all the trumpets blown next, and then all the vowels poured out way at the end. It's just similar to the way Lou's talking, even though we have a couple differences and some views. But in general, when when John the Revelator was talking, he said he talked about these. You're going to see the things that were in the past, the things that are happening now, and then the things that are happening going to happen in the future. 
So when you look at the seals, trumpets, and the bowls, you get three different views of sometime the same event. And I just did a series on our BitChute channel that you could go and watch. It talks about the three woes. And I'm getting this all in my time. So, and then Dawn's going to close us up. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to something else here. But after the three woes, you see three specific things happen. One would happen in the fifth um, seal, the fifth trumpet, and the fifth bowl. That's when the abyss is open and Satan is released to the earth. Number six on the seal, trumpet, and bowl. All says the river Euphrates will be dried up so the kings of the east can cross over for the battle of Armageddon. The seventh seal, trumpet, and bowl all talk about the coming of the Messiah or the day of the Lord, depending on what view they're looking at it from. So those are three different um, events that are taking place from different views, meaning the seals, trumpets, and bowls. But I want Betty, because Betty has had a, a stroke there, and they said she'd never be able to talk or read or write, but I want her to read a couple verses for us this morning, and then I'm going to comment on them in the time that I have left. But she's going to start in Revelation chapter 19, verse 17, and she'll read to chapter 20. Are you but, unmuted, Lisa? Yes, you got to unmute her. There we go. You ready, Betty? Okay. Right here. Yep. When I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud so that was me. saying to all the birds and the, that fly in the midst of the heavens, come and gather together for the supper of the great of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slaves, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the king of the earth and their armies, Together, gather together, gathered together to make war against him, him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he was deceived. Those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded out up from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. Okay, so. Betty. Thank you very much. Now let okay. me clarify some things here in, in the time that I have left. I want to give you a summary on, on the way the events are going to happen at the end, how this is all going to unfold. <laughs> Another thing that I was taught when I was younger, that everybody went to hell. In other words, you went to heaven or hell when you died. And that was the final place that you'd ever go to. And, and simply, that's just not true. I mean, so what happens is we see here at the end of the time when the Messiah comes back to set up his kingdom for a millennial reign, which is a thousand year reign. Betty just read for us, it says in Revelation 19, 20, it says, but the beast was taken prisoner and along with him, the false prophet who had performed signs on his authority by which he received those who accepted the mark. Both of them, both of them, we're talking about the beast and the false prophet. Okay, both of them are what? They're thrown into the lake of fire that burns with sulfur forever. Alive. Right, so they're thrown alive into the lake of fire. The lake of fire is not hell. No. There's the different locations. So it says this, the rest were killed with the sword that came from the mouth of the rider, which would be Jesus, and on the horse and all the birds were filled with their flesh. 
then listen what it says. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven with the key to the abyss and a great chain in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he sees the dragon, that ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan. So now we have the beast and the false prophet. They're already in the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. So now we have the devil, which is called Satan, and he bound him for a thousand years. So mm -hmm. Satan will be bound for the period of the millennium, which is a thousand year period. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the false prophet, okay, and the beast are already in the lake of fire. They're never going to get out of there. That's the second death. Yep. Yep. It says he threw them into the, he threw him into the abyss, closed it and put a seal on it that, so that he would no longer deceive the nations until the thousand years were completed. Mm -hmm. After that, he must be released for a short season or a short time. Now, if you're in your Bibles with me, and for those that will watch this later, they're even doing Bible studies off our Bible study. But I want to share with you Revelation chapter 20, verse 13. Now, listen to this. This will clear, clear this up a lot. This is how these events are going to unfold at the end. It says, then the sea, the sea is representation of all the people on the earth, could be the, the water also, but it says, gave up its dead. And then listen to this, and death and hell or Hades mm -hmm. gave up the dead, yeah. gave up their dead. So hell, Hades, and death oh, also yeah. have a place where people were held or go. They were all judged according to their works. Then listen to this. Nice. Then death and hell. Yep. Hell is the holding tank to get you to that final judgment. But death and hell were thrown where? The Into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. The lake of fire and hell and Hades are different places. Yep. Yep. Death and hell were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Yep. The lake of, this is the second death, the lake of fire. And anyone not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. So in summary, you have the beast, a man who is going to be a representation of the beast and the false prophet. These two are thrown into the lake of fire when Jesus comes back to set up his kingdom on the earth. Then an angel is dispatched to take Satan himself or the devil, bind him up with a chain, and let's say place him in hell or Hades. Yeah. Yeah. Hell is just a holding tank where he has a cell that has been reserved for him, a place that is specifically reserved for the devil. It's got his yep. name carved on it. Yes, his name is above the door. Mm -hmm. yep. So yep. when the angel wraps him up with this chain, he puts him in hell for 1,000 years. Jesus rules as the Prince of Peace. He will set up his government Amen. on this earth. Jesus is coming, and the government shall rest on his shoulders. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, nobody else. We cannot put our focus or our trust in any man whatsoever because Jesus is coming back to set up his kingdom on this earth. So after this thousand years, I don't understand this part, but Satan will be released out of the abyss. Me and Don <laughs> talked about this before, but he has an opportunity to tempt or test those who have been on the earth during that millennial reign when everything was perfect. Hmm. So they'll have the right to still receive Jesus or go with the devil, which is crazy to me, but that's what will happen. Hmm. Then after that, death and hell will be bound up together. The great white throne judgment takes place. That's all those who have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and they'll all be thrown into the lake yep. of fire, which burns yeah. with fire and drip brimstone yeah. forever yeah. Amen. Amen. amen 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 hey ron yes sir it's interesting <clears throat> when they minute doing a thousand year reign yes and someone sins okay we know they will right yes that that 10 day period i don't understand either okay but 
they don't get no chance. So it's like they're going to go right into the hell, right into hell's fire. It's not like the death and Hades or like a Hades and Shul and, and, and before that, you know that. Evidently, that's going to happen, right? People are going to sin during the middle of the 1,000-year uh, reign because, they, they, you know, I'm talking about they're, they're being raised and so forth during that time. Go ahead. Right. <clears throat> well, it says right before it in verse 11, in Revelation 20, 11, it says, Then I saw a great white throne yep, and yep, one yep. seated on it. <laughs> Earth and heaven fled from his presence, and no place was even found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and small, standing before the throne, and the books were open. Yep. And another book was open, which is the book of life. Amen. And the dead were judged according to their works, which was written in these books. Yep. So there are books that are written, and there's a book of life that is written. Yep. And it's our call at Crossing Pass to bring salvation through testimonies all over the world, because we understand that time is short. Jesus is coming. And all of us will be judged according to the things that are written in these books. Amen. 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 That's, Amen. It, it's not, I, I don't believe that that's because you're going to be judged that way. I believe it's, it's like you're going to get your, that's like he said, when he comes, he's bringing his, his uh, gifts with you, with him, you know, what you've done. So I don't, uh, the white th throne, I believe that's for unbelievers. It is. I believe, yeah, it but is. I, but I believe the other thing, it's not, it's not like you're going to get judged about stuff in for, for the good, good people, the people that have given their life to Jesus. He's going right. to give his gifts to them. Right. Right. Yeah. But just so people don't under don't think that that's kind of like a holding place where you can go and you can buy your way out of right. which some churches teach you can't once no. you die that is it you're it that's it yep that's it no change in the location after that you got to change it beforehand okay yeah. so yeah. i'll i'll clear up what deb's talking about there here very briefly in revelation 20 if you go to revelation 20s verse 4 it says this, then I saw the thrones and the people seated on them who were given authority to judge. Yep. Yep. He says, I also saw the souls of those who had been beheaded Before. because of their testimony about Jesus Amen. and because of the word of God. That could very well Amen. be us. Amen. Who had not worshiped the beast or his image and who had not Amen. accepted the mark on their foreheads or their hands. Right. Now listen to this. They, those who were beheaded, it says they came to life and reigned with the Messiah for a thousand years. That's us. That is us. Those are right. us Christians who are now yes. raised from the dead. Yes. It says, listen, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning this, brethren, for those who have fallen asleep. For we who are alive and remain, we who are alive and remain on the earth until the coming of the Lord, mm -hmm. we shall be caught up together with him in the clouds in the air, and we will therefore be in the clouds with the Lord forever. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. So all the dead in Christ will be resurrected, and we will be with the Messiah, and we will reign for a thousand years. Now watch this. It says, and they came to write life and reign with the Messiah for a thousand years. Now listen, the rest of the dead, mm -hmm. yep. the rest of the dead did not come back to life. This is clear as you're going to get. The rest of the dead, those who have not accepted Jesus Christ, my dad passed away August 6th of 99. His body's going to be resurrected. Yes. He'll be with the Messiah. Lisa, your dad, Dawn, your family members that you led to Jesus, they'll be resurrected. But the rest of the dead, the people who have never accepted Jesus, their bodies will still be in the ground until after that thousand years is over, when the great white throne take judgment takes place, and this is what Deb was saying, yep, this yep. is how it happens. It says the rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. Listen to this. Listen, this is the first resurrection. Yes. Do you understand that? It It's clear. When it says that we are caught up with God whenever and however that takes place. He says, 
These people had already been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus, and they have not worshipped the beast or his image, Amen. and they have not accepted the mark on their right hand or the forehead. We got to be Daniels. So we know when that Shadrach, takes place. And, Abednego. and then he says here, blessed Hallelujah. and holy is the one who shares in this first resurrection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if this is the first resurrection, there couldn't be re multiple resurrections before that. Because Amen. I'm telling you here when the first resurrection takes place. The second death, meaning when you're cast into the lake of fire, right? The second death has no power over these people. You and I and those of us who trust in Jesus when we're resurrected for the battle of Armageddon, however and whenever that may take place, that second death, the lake of fire, that has no, no it can't touch you. You've already been resurrected. Right. He says the second death has no power over these, but they will be priests of God. You're going to be a priest of God. You're going to be judging on the earth during that thousand year period. Yep. And the Messiah, and they will reign with him for those thousand years. Amen. 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 This is beautiful. And but yes. people never really get a good grasp. <laughs> what did it say? <clears throat> be not deceived? Why would he tell us that? Uh, he no. said right here, he goes. Um, and put a seal on it so that he would no longer know that one. It said you said something about um, being not deceived. I don't oh, know where yeah. it was, but wonder why I'd say that. Probably because somebody could deceive us about it. Yeah. Amen. So, it's beautiful, Amen. guys, and we're all doing a good job trying to put this all Amen. together. But that's how it fits. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I, I think one of the easiest ways, the one of the easiest ways to remember something is if you have one birth, you have two deaths. Okay, but if you have two two births, then you have one death. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Yep. So that uh, that's kind of how the book of Revelation wraps itself up there. And I, I like to clarify that because a lot of people have been taught that hell is the last place for everybody yeah. and everybody goes there, then everybody's judged at the same time. That's not yeah. how it takes place. Amen. Or Amen. Takes the way out. All right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead, Mr. Reed. You're biting at the bit. Okay. No, Ron, I just want to say it, uh, Susan or Christine or some of the new people here, maybe that I haven't met or haven't met, this revelation is over naturally. But Genesis is a start for the new year. Amen. This will be, what, the third year, Ron, that we've done this? Yeah, on this live Zoom call. Yeah. Now, what I want people to know, that like, we try to do something different every year because we all know about Adam and Eve. We all know about this and that. So... I try to throw things that'll stick to your mind. Like when I, I was a little boy, we, we and kids grew up, they threw stuff against the wall and it stuck. You all remember that, right? Mm -hmm. And they ruined many wallpapers. <laughs> but anyway, we've all been through that. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> I want to go through Genesis real quick. In Genesis 1, okay, there is nine, and God said, nine said, and God said, and God said, and God said. And then in Genesis 1, 31, and God saw what? Everything he made was good. So you get through Genesis 1 real quick, isn't it? And God said, and God said, and when God spoke the world in existence and so forth, you know. But I want to move on to Genesis 2, you know. When you go to Genesis 2, you get into some real problems because, you know, the six days was on in Genesis 1, but the seventh day come in Genesis 2. We know, I believe, it was 24 hours. I don't want to argue that either. But anyways, and Genesis 2, it said, that uh, and God took rested on the second day. Okay, now if you take that uh, in Genesis two, we're moving towards really uh, a progression in our lives. Uh, the, the book of the whole Bible is a progression in your walk with the Lord. First, you have to become born again. You'll never progress until you've been born again, and you got rid of your religious spirit, whatever it is. Okay, mm -hmm. so now we come to Genesis three. We have the fall of man. Okay. And I think we all know the story about Adam and Eve, right? It was always a woman's fault, right? We could blame the men, can blame that, but that's oh not true. My. <laughs> I gotta throw, I gotta throw that in to defend us <laughs> men here. But anyway, everybody knows these things, but we want to get something in here that'll stick to you today, as far as uh, moving up to the first seven, ch six chapters of of Genesis. Okay, I know that uh, a lot of people that we have numbers, the uh, number seven. Uh, and and from a scripture quite off often. One day the Lord shut kept showing me the number four four four. It kept pop, uh, popping up on license and things like that, you know. 
And I found out when I looked on what the biblical 444 was, well, you run it up, you'll see it was in good men in God's perfect will almost. I was, well, God was telling me that. So if you're out there today, you may have a number that keeps coming up with you. Huddle up in scripture. Maybe God, God will talk through numbers. I just want to say maybe you didn't know that for a, a new person or so forth because we God has different ways of talking to people. You know that. So yes. third chapter, we know the fall man. Okay, we all know the story there in Genesis 3. Okay, the reason why I'm bringing this up too because we're going to go to Genesis 4. And now, of course, we have the, here's a question I want everybody to think about. And we, for, Adam and Eve naturally had a son. The first son was who? Cain. Cain was the oldest. Cain was the oldest, all right? And you know what happened, right? Uh, Cain, Cain killed, killed Abel. Cain killed Abel, right? Now, what is? why did God get mad at Cain? Real quickly, I want somebody to say something. I'll tell you why. Because of his attitude. Uh, the... No, no. He, he tried to earn his own Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so, I mean, earn. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what I believe. I, I'm just trying to bring out something different this year. Cain killed Abel. Don't forget, you have two sons. Ron, you had two sons. I have two sons. Whoever has two sons. If you had two sons, would you tell them the same <laughs> thing if you're going to, and they're growing up, right? Petty, petty, petty. Everybody with me? <laughs> Am I going too fast? No, go ahead. <laughs> we, just right. got, we just got confused. On We're awestruck. Yeah, you know, the two sons that we have, we didn't realize we had two. Betty oh, almost fainted. Betty almost fainted when you said me and Deborah have two sons. <laughs> Well, I, I know that, but I never told you. You told me that. I don't know. That, <laughs> that's not true, Mom. It's not. Uh, no, You're that's bad, not true. It's I'm telling a, you. It's just an uh, example. Okay, go uh, ahead. Uh, uh, all right. Now, Cain killed Abel, right? Well, uh, why did Cain? Why wasn't God? Why was God mad at Cain? I mean, here, if you have two sons, animal sacrifices. We all know that sacrifices, right? Right. Uh -huh. And who 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 did the right sacrifice? It was Abel, right? Uh huh. Did Cain know to do it? Absolutely. His dad said, right? He decided to bring the fruit of the land or something from the land, right? And my opinion is he knew, they both knew, and that's why God was upset with Cain. Anybody want to comment on that? Mm -mm. Amen. So he, had, right? so he had a rebellious yeah. spirit to do his own thing. Yes. Yeah, I know, but still, he he still knew that what I'm trying to say. Right, that's what I'm saying. Sons. He yeah. knew, but he had a rebellious spirit that he was like, he, you know, he wanted to do it his way. I want to do. Yeah. Right. He, rebellious yeah. spirit, whatever you want to call it. He knew it was wrong. He was going to do it his way. You're right. Rebellious, right? right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, that's one reason I'm trying to bring it out here. That That's why, you know, they got an argument. It says Cain killed out, and they got an argument. What, what, what did Cain and Abel argue about? Anybody know? I'll tell you what I think. What do you think, Ron? Right these are different. These are things to think about. Probably like who was right and who was. I think wrong. it might have been Cain. Abel might have said, "You know, look, uh, you're my brother. Dad told us to do it this way. Right. right. And you didn't do it. So he got mad and he killed him. So I'm just, yeah. I, I'm just going in. Maybe it's not scripture. All right. So now that, that's the fourth chapter, right? Now naturally, whenever Cain killed Abel, right, he went out and got you know married his sisters and brothers and so forth. We all know that. Uh, he went out to the land and went to the land of Nod. Guess what the lot, Nod spells backwards? Yeah. D-O-N. <laughs> Me. <laughs> I made the Bible way back in Genesis, all right? Anyways, he, and, he, and he told everybody, you're going to put a mark on him, right? Yep, yep. Right. So, so they knew right or wrong. All right. In Genesis, you can if you take Genesis, I can show you where the 12, 10, uh, 10, uh, 10, yes. uh, 10 commandments are all through Genesis. Mm. Then Genesis, right? So now we go to the fourth chapter. Or Cain killed Abel. Okay, now when we when we move on to the fifth chapter, uh, we know it's all about records and so forth. And we also know about the first rapture in the Bible, if we want to call it Enoch. For someone that's never been reading the Bible, Enoch said, and, and Enoch was and there. He was. It was not. Right. He walked and talked with talked God with for God. Mm -hmm. for what for three hundred years, and and then at three hundred sixty-five years old. He was not. He was taken or raptured up. Okay, so someone new maybe don't know this, but that's a good thing to know. That's in the book of in chapter five in Genesis. Okay, it's a type of rapture in Genesis five. Okay, hmm. now number six, chapter six. That's the six chapters I'm doing today. I'm moving it real quick here. I know that, but in six chapter, uh, 
whenever they're getting ready for the flood, all right? How many days, uh, and I know it doesn't say that until the seventh chapter, how many days was Noah's in the ark? I'm just trying to put something that will stick against the wall in the name. What's your opinion, Ron, or, or anybody 100, out there? How many, 100, how many days? Would, huh? 150? No, no, way off. Go ahead. How many days it was in the ark? It was, well, in the ark. Oh, yeah. How many days was Noah in the ark? Oh, well, yeah. 365 or something like that, wasn't it? Absolutely. I, I think it's between 360 and 365. Three, right. 360 and 370, because at them time, there was 29.5 days in a month, depending on right. what you have, 30 days in a month. I went through and checked it out. But anyways, it, it, I, this is something for people new to know. No, it was in that arc. When I did, I, it smelled pretty bad in there, people, by the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and can you imagine being in that all that time in that arc, right? Yeah. Uh, I know, I know, my time is running out, but I'm trying to show, show something in here that people can see that we're uh, we're we're trying to get everything in on a short period of time that we have. Right. So uh, I would say, with anywhere we're on, anywhere from 360 to 370, yeah. because uh, some say it was 10 days different there. It doesn't really matter. Does that matter? No, it doesn't really matter. But when people will come to you and say these questions to you, it's good for you to know it. Amen. Amen. These are little things that I'm talking about beginners. They come to you. They ask you all these questions. Here, here's a good one. Who created God? I'll just tell you, one little five, 10 year old uh, come to me and sat on the table. I said, shut up. That's the way I answered him. <laughs> uh, I, well, there's no such telling me God always was, right? Right. But these are little, these are little things that when you get progressive as we go through the Bible every year, these are little remembrance I try to teach in my uh, my teaching here. For instance, when you go to the seventh chapter in Genesis, you realize how many sevens are mentioned through the seventh chapter of Genesis? Mm -hmm. Look it up if you don't believe me. Mm -hmm. yeah. seven, seven clean animals, there's two unclean, there's seven days here, seven, seven days, days seven, went to the seven, ark, seven, seven days before it rained. You know, yeah. uh, yep. it was three, three sevens for the ark, uh, for, the, for the dove to go out and so forth, you know. So mm -hmm. all these things happen to be something that we on here ought to teach other people who are beginners. Amen. Believe me, when you get somebody saved, don't throw them out under the bus. Give them, I spend $30 on, I don't know how many, I'm bragging, I don't know how many I bought of these uh, pathways in my entire life. I must have bought maybe 100, 100 uh, every time I lead somebody to the Lord, I get their name, address, and telephone Amen. number. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is before we even started with Ron. Right. And I, and I, and I keep each one of these in my office. And then when I lead somebody to the Lord in the office, I go right over to a box. I pull up one of these 12, I pull up 12 books and give yep, it to them. Exactly. Three. Yep. So that the ones that you get every month, keep yes. going. Keep, yes. And when you lead somebody to the Lord, give them the book. Yeah. Or, or yep. Spend, yep. please listen to me. Spend $30 on the guy. I send $30 or $40 for each one. I don't care. I'm not bragging. I'm just telling you the truth. I mean, what is a guy worth, right? You lead right. him to the Lord. You're not going to see him. Maybe he's going to California. He's done. That's right. Send him. Send it through the mail. That way, a lot of times, I don't even tell him I'm doing it. And then somebody called me and said, hey, Don, did you send me that? I said, yes. Mm -hmm. And they thank you. Okay? So this right. is one way that we have the crossing pass that's been in existence since Ron and I and Deborah started this thing, or yeah. as long as we've been here together. There's always a way to teach. Amen. And a good teacher, mm -hmm. let me tell you something out there. Mm -hmm. A good teacher is a good listener. I'll say that again. A good TV host is a good listener. Yeah. I, I, I learned that when I was on the 700 Club of Pat Roberts. I know in my lifetime that I've led hundreds of people to the Lord, so is Ron. But I, I don't care to pat myself on the back. All I know is when God has gifts, he's got everyone on this TV program here today, everyone on this uh, Zoom call, Amen. everyone of you have a gift. Yes. And I'm telling you, and I don't, I always went and encouraged somebody especially a new person, whether it be uh, Christine or, or somebody else I've never met here or have met, we always want to encourage each other. Amen. So I'll close now. My time is up. But remember that. When you have a little boy and he got this stuff that throws him against the wall and it sticks. <laughs> Amen. Now you've learned something today. You've learned how many days in a year, right? Not Amen. 150, right? You learned also Cain when he killed Abel. Why, right? We think, okay? We know how many... How many uh, how many how many floors was in the ark? Enough. Three, three. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. No, how, in the ark, there was three floors. How many doors in the ark? One. 
One. How many doors to, he many doors to heaven? One. One. One door, right? How many times did the dove go out of the ark? Several. Three times. Three times. <laughs> I'm just telling you, these are little it bits I try to throw in. So that's my time limit up. I'm just saying, Ron, that we ought to, we ought, every year we need to change our format in the extent Amen. that we're, we're old timers now. Every one of us are old timers, right? Amen. So old timers need to learn from old timers. Amen. And and I always say that when we're sitting around and you're in a restaurant, having a restaurant sometime, you can, how do you want to start a subject? You know, sit around and say, how many, let me ask you something. How many days was Mo in New York? You can start that conversation at a restaurant and lunch hour. You'll talk about it and everybody will be listening. Do you know that? Yep. Amen. So Wait. there's always a way to start a conversation. Okay, Ron, I'm done. Thank you. Don did a great job. I'm going to tell you how to join our program for those of you who are always calling me and asking me and texting me how to join the program. Here's how you join. love through the power of a person's testimony. As we present stories of lives that God has changed, we also want to disciple our viewers by studying the Bible together. We are inviting you, the viewer, to a free weekly Zoom Bible study hosted by Pastor Ron Kosar every Wednesday at 11 o'clock a.m. Spending time in God's Word is the best way to grow as a believer. Because of our fast-paced lives, it can be hard to make time to read the Bible. As a team, we will read through the Bible in a year. That's why we would like you to become part of our First Stringers Partner Program. When you partner with Crossing Paths, you will receive our Bible Pathways monthly study book. This monthly publication will help guide you in reading the Bible completely within a year. First Stringers who donate $25, $40, or $80 a month or also make a one-time $77 donation will receive the book God's Promises for Your Every Need as well as the Bible Pathways Monthly Study Book. For partners who donate a one-time donation of $500 or $1,000, you will receive Pastor Ron's two books unveiling the New Covenant in the Jerusalem Council as well as our special book offer of the quarter. Join with Crossing Paths today to spread the gospel of Jesus through the power of testimony. Amen. Hey, Ron. Yes, hey, Ron. Sir. Yeah. Let me just shut up for a minute here, okay? For all of us on here, I'm going to go back to number seven, all right? I want all of us to tell seven people this week about Zoom and Crossing Paths and Ron and Deborah. Everybody tell them, okay? Right. We agree. There's some somebody you can tell. Number two, you would give $7 a month or $77 a month or one check for $777.77. Send it to Ron and Deborah so they can continue on in crossing paths. All right. Thank you, Ron. Amen. Thanks. Love you, Dawn. Thank you. Betty, thanks for helping us out today. You did a great job. Yeah. Bless you. Bless. All right. Love you guys. See you next time. Remember to share the link. I'll have it edited today and post it up. But love and appreciate every single one of you. And bless, bless Betty. Amen. Amen. Bless Amen. Betty. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Amen. Amen. He is.